which has been quite a two-week journey since you guys left home a couple weeks ago. Just talk about the process and just how this got how this team's kind of got on a roll. Yeah, it, it has been a journey. I mean, uh, rough at times too. You know, go to Anaheim that night game. We got in Seattle early in the morning, trying to win a couple games there, couldn't quite get it done. So we ended up flying to Tampa. That was about five and a half hours. Got in late there, uh, but the boys found a way. talk about your goals and things, but you know, you have to enjoy the journey too, the ups and downs, I guess, and, which uh, they did, and they did a great job of uh, putting, a, again, a tough series, tough loss behind them, and played well in Tampa, and played well in Baltimore, it's good to be home though, you know, these guys haven't seen their families in a couple weeks, so I, I'm sure, you know, they're, they're excited about being home, playing here in front of the home fans, being at, you know, our ballpark, so it's uh, Good feeling when you walk in this ballpark. Coach, I know you weren't here a couple years ago, but the this stadium hosted a, a lot of postseason games that the Rangers weren't in, and the World Series that the Rangers weren't in. To come back here, host the first postseason game in this building, first in Texas, in Arlington, in quite a few years too. How big is that? Well, for me, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think. Ranger fans, hopefully they're, they're really excited about it because it's, it's been a little while and it wasn't all that long ago when you know, they were having a lot of postseason games. So, you know, the, you know I have the first one here. Uh, I, I'm honored to be part of that you know, and be part of you know, what's going on right now. And uh, like I said, um, you know, it, it's, it's a tough journey getting here. You know, but uh, it's good to be here. And I'm, I'm looking forward to just seeing the atmosphere. Nobody has seen it yet, so I think the players are too. And, uh, it's going to be an exciting time tomorrow night. Kevin Sharon from Dallas Morning News. Bruce, do you, do you expect the, 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 my understanding was the Baltimore crowd was really loud. Uh, do you expect that sort of thing here? Do you, do you feel like that this is built up here at this place now that this fan base believes in this team? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I'm new here. It's my first year, so it's a hard one for me to answer, but certainly hope so. We are. I know where I'm living. Uh, you know, fans that you know, they they want to talk baseball, so I, I'm seeing some excitement. But we've been gone for two weeks, so I really can't you know, tell you the mood, the, the, the tempo, or spirit of what's going on around the city. But we certainly hope uh, we'll have a similar uh, atmosphere that we saw in Baltimore because they were really excited about their team. So I'm looking forward to it. To, you know, see exactly where we're at with all this. And, but I'll say this before uh, we hit that road trip. You could feel it here. You could sense it, uh, the excitement, the enthusiasm, the electricity in the ballpark. So uh, I think the guys are looking forward to seeing it too. Do you believe in that kind of thing? I do. Yeah. I do. It's, it's, you know, and not to just talk about Tampa again, but uh, you know, with the year they had, you know, it's it's a little bit of a downer, to be honest. Uh, I'm sure them, but they, even on our side, you know, I think they had 19,000. I get it, you know, you get rounds now, you know, when you're used to postseason, sometimes it's going to be that next round or World Series, whatever. But for us, uh, I, I think it's big. I think the players feed off it, no question about it. And, you know, they're so important. And, and part of their enthusiasm is it, that's a adrenaline we run on, too. Because it's, it's been a tough grind. These guys have gone through a lot, so you know it's, it certainly does a lot to help pick them up. Okay. I, you, you play across the street in 2010 with the Giants. Do you remember the atmosphere then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't that long ago, come on. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I do. No, it was great. It was great, to, and the fans were great. Really into it, you, you can feel it. You know, it started in San Francisco, but uh, we came here, and, and uh, it was packed. Uh, you know, same type of atmosphere we saw in the other ballparks uh, before that. Uh, Mitch said something yesterday that that maybe not winning the division was maybe a, a blessing in disguise because you guys had to get your mind straight right away, and then you jumped right in back into games and have been in playing since then. Do you see any? credibility to that idea. Yeah, you know, that, that gets asked a lot, you know, how 
I'll be honest, that's my preference. We we win the division, have a, have a few days, uh, and I, I get it, you know, because you got to keep going, you got to stay in that you know, playing mode, and um, you know it's hard to have that switch go on and off. Not that you're, you're going to turn it off in just four or five days and not quite being on that same competitive level. I don't care what kind of workout you're holding. Uh, uh, is that an advantage? It's hard to say. I mean, you can, you know, guys can wear down a little bit too or pitching, uh, but there's something about it. I've, Gone at it both ways through the wild card route and uh, having some time off. And, you know, and if I had to pick which way, yeah, I, I'd take the time off. But it's, there's a little bit more of a guarantee on that next round. Through these first three or four postseason games, I mean, the bullpen has kind of bent but not broken. You know, what are you seeing from those guys and how big they've kind of come up in a lot of these situations? Our bullpen has uh, really done a nice job. Be honest, yeah, it's been a challenge uh, all year. Mike and I have discussed this bullpen on a daily basis to try to keep things in order. At times we've had it in order, other times, you know, we've had to try to patch it up. But you know, lately, uh, we have not just one or two guys uh, that we can go to, so we have some really good options. Uh, you know, guys that we're comfortable using high leverage situations, and really, there's nobody down there I don't, you know, wouldn't. Saw us bring the kid in yesterday, and so really we'll we'll bring in anybody. So I, I think we're sitting as well as we have been in bullpen all year uh, with the health and, uh, and how they're throwing the ball and their confidence. Second one, uh, Lawrence Dow, former Star Telegram. How impressed have you been with Evan Carter and Josh Jones starting the season? You have to be impressed with these two young kids. How they're carrying themselves. Uh, Handling uh, the intense games that we're playing in, you wouldn't know it, but these two, I love their focus. Uh, they're not afraid of anything. They, these guys want to be out there. They, they, they want to be in the fire. You can see it. And you don't know really how a young player is going to handle a you know, playoff type situation or atmosphere. But these two, and really, I felt that way even before we got to the postseason. These two would be fine, and they are. They're, they're really, really good players, but they're mentally tough. Uh, they, you know, they, they want to be out there. Questions for Coach? Back. Coach, apparently uh, Marcus said something when I asked about Corey Seager, uh, and I'll paraphrase, uh, you know, that he's always been impressed with his work ethic, uh, the way he goes about things, but that Seeing postseason Corey was kind of an eye opener to him. Uh, there's a, a different level apparently that he goes to, which is interesting to imagine. I'm, I'm not sure how much access you get to that, but is there something you can tell us about postseason Corey Seager? Well, I, I'll say this: I, I think great players, uh, you know, they have a way of just raising their level of play. Uh, they, you know, it's what they play for. You know, talking to Corey last winter first took the job. That's all he talked about. He, he wants to win. And that's that's why he's in this game. I'm sure last year was a difficult year for him, especially when he's used to winning. So this is what he's about. And he's he's as excited as anybody, trust me, uh, about being in this situation. So uh, I think you're just seeing a really, really outstanding player that, uh, as most of them do, they get better in, in posing. Focus gets better. They're just, they're just uh, fired up about it, and, and I'd say the same with Marcus. Uh, you know, these guys. Uh, this, this is why we play, and they've been around. They understand it, and this is what's great for the young players. You know, to see what's going on. You know, you go to Baltimore, you see that atmosphere. Now they really get what we're talking about. Why you play the game? That's to be in the postseason. Yeah, you talk about uh, encouraging your players to uh, appreciate the, the moment. Do you do you have a new uh, appreciation for that, given the fact that not that long ago you had reason to wonder if you'd ever be in this position again? Oh, no question. I have a deeper appreciation for where we're at. Three years, you know, I, I was sitting on the couch or doing a little fishing, maybe a little golfing, but watching baseball and missing it more and more. 
So to be where I'm at, I, I said I'm blessed, I, I'm, I'm grateful. I see why he gave me a call and where I'm at and to be it's such a, a great ball club, a great front office, and of course ownership, uh, Ray doing what he did to you know, help us you know, get the resources uh, and tools that we needed to be in this uh, position. But you know, I know it's not that easy. I, I've been fortunate. I've been doing this a long time, like 25 years before this year, and, and it's just not that easy to get to the postseason. And so I, I'm really, really grateful. It's right here. Coach, uh, Jared Sandler, Rangers Radio. Uh, with Corey, so how do you balance his desire to, to use the bat as a weapon in the box versus Baltimore pitching around him and the benefit of getting on base five times with the walk. Do you have to talk to him? Do Tim or Donnie talk to him? How do you kind of approach that? No, we uh, we don't need to talk to him. I mean, it's a pretty simple game. If you don't get a strike, you, you know, they don't, don't expand. You know, just pass that baton to the next guy. It's you're how good you are. It's hard to hit a pitch that's not in the zone hard. And so Corey gets that. And hey, you know, Mitch uh, came through yesterday. We got the Garcia behind. Him. So, you know, you get it. You know, you're going to be careful with, with uh, the great hitters. So we, we don't want to get to the point of diminishing return on what he can bring by trying to get him to expand or anything. Hey, you know, take your walk. And we'll, we'll keep things moving. Then, oh, one more, sorry. It seems like Creed is becoming a big thing for this team, listening to Creed, the band, before games. I'm curious. Uh, if they're high up on your favorite bands list and if you have a favorite Creed song. Yeah, I, I don't know a lot of their songs, to be honest. I, I do know we're playing a lot of Creed, but uh, yeah, that's not down my lane. You know, this, uh, but uh, uh, no, it's, I don't know who's the DJ here, to be honest. So I, I don't know where it's coming from. It uh, could be Hedges, though. Uh, I'll, I'll find out for you. Yeah. Yeah, what does it mean to have Mike Maddox long for this ride with you? Been awesome, uh, you know, for me to have him along my side. Uh, I, uh, I'm lucky. I know it. Uh, I love. Got a great way about him, great sense of humor, wisdom. Uh, I, I rely on talking about the, the pitching, bullpen, things like that. And, um, and somebody my age too, but he, well, I can't, I can't say that. He'll get mad. He, he's younger than I am, but anyway, no, it's, it's been really good. And when he was available when I first came over here. I said, man, this could have worked out better for me. So it's been a good year uh, hanging around with Mike. Carver did a pretty nice job in the third spot yesterday. Are you close to settling and maybe that he would stay there or are you, are you still going to adjust on uh, depending on what the matchups are? Yeah. Well, I'll say this. If he had a grand slam, you're in there the next day. So I, that's a rule I had. I came up with about 10 years ago. Uh, I think you'll see Mitch get, you know, more playing time. And I said this uh, to Mitch. Uh, I wanted to get him in the mix uh, a few days ago. Uh, you know, I know two different type hitters. Robbie's done a great job, too. Uh, we saw what Mitch can do, and uh, he swinged the bat well. And, to answer your question, yes, he'll, he'll be getting a, getting a lot of playing time. Coach, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Okay, got it.